Hey guys, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Who's ready for some 900 horsepower big block power combos? We have an NA version, we have a 671 Roots supercharged version, and of course we have low buck turbos. Let's check it out. Okay guys, we're gonna jump right in. 900 horsepower big block Chevy combinations. We're gonna start off with a naturally aspirated version that I put together. And this, like a lot of the motors that I put together, whether it's a 454, 496, 540, or even including this 565, I kind of want them to be dual purpose motors. So I, do, I purposely don't build them as dedicated NA motors where you might be wanting to run 14 or 15 to one compression and have it be a dedicated NA motor. You could also run nitrous on that, but but not something that I could add boost to. So I always have that in the back of my mind when I'm putting these motors together, which is why this combination got a fairly reasonable static compression ratio of 10 and a half to one. Now it had a really big camshaft in it, so I could have gotten away with uh, more static compression, but I had the in the back of my mind, what if I want to run a centrifugal blower on this or turbos or whatever? So that's where we started out. But this combination started out, and obviously you can see from the dyno curve, we'll, we'll just jump right in and tell you the power outputs made 944 horsepower uh, all the way out at 7200 and peak torque was at 5500 742 foot pounds officially qualifying it as more than 900 horsepower to fit in this video in this category but here's how we did it i started off with a merlin a world products merlin three block so thank you guys way back when for supplying that I stepped it full of forged internals. Obviously, we're revving it fairly high and making fairly good power. So we had a forged steel crank 4250. The block was bored to 4600 to accept a combination of CP Carrillo forged rods and forged pistons. And the pistons had small domes on them. Um, and all of that worked out really well. They had big enough valve reliefs that we could run a good size camshaft in this thing. And if you're going to make this kind of power, you need obviously lots of cam timing. You need lots of head flow and intake flow, both of which we supplied. So in terms of the cylinder heads, we supplied a set of AFR 357 heads. Those things flowed 425 CFM or enough to support this kind of power level. They have a, a 2.3 188 valve package on them. So they were a good addition to this combination, giving us enough air flow to step up and obviously make this kind of power. Now we topped that off, well before topping it off with our tunnel ram intake manifold, we had to choose a camshaft and again, a big displacement motor running RPM, you're gonna need a fairly healthy camshaft in it. So we did pick a, a healthy solid roller race camshaft in it. It was an off the shelf one from Comp. It was an 11727-9 and that camshaft offered an 800 748 lift split, so good lift. It had a 284 300 degree duration split and 112 degree lobe separation angle. Again, solid roller. Comp also supplied the solid roller lifters that we ran, hard push rods and we had um, obviously a set of aluminum gold roller rockers on it. To top things off, and we, we ran this a number of different ways, there are other videos up to show that, but we ran it uh, first with a Edelbrock Super Victor 4500 and, and a 1050 Dominator on it and an MSD distributor. The other thing that was very important on this combination is we had a Moroso oiling system on it. The Moroso oil pan had an integrated windage tray. We had a billet pump on it. It was all good stuff for a, a wet sump application. Obviously a dry sump might, might be even better, but we also made sure to have the proper oil level and all that stuff so that we could have uh, runs made on the dyno without windage issues. Cause that will definitely take away power and obviously potentially take away longevity if you, if you drop oil pressure. So all that stuff worked out good, but we ran it in a number of different configurations. As I said, we ran it as a single four barrel. We ran it as a single four barrel with nitrous. And then we added this Wilson ported dart tunnel ram with <laughs> not one but two 1050 dominators on it and we also threw basically this thing started out making like less than 800 horsepower when we first started up and after the initial break-in so it took a lot of steps to finally get it to this point we had a hard time getting enough fuel to this thing we ended up doing the toothpick trick and just sticking that in the air bleed to get us in one corner we did corner jetting with brulee and he, you know thank him for his help he, that worked out really great but we ran the wilson ported tunnel ram and the two 1050 Hollies on it, and, now, and all of that worked out really well with the um, C16 race fuel or, or Q16 race fuel. And once everything was said and done <laughs> and all the smoke cleared, not that there was any smoke, this thing, as I said, did really well, produced over 900 horsepower, 
And remember, 10 and a half to one static with so not very much dynamic compression with that kind of a camshaft and a 10 and a half to one static. 944 horsepower and 742 foot pounds. Obviously, with more static compression, this thing would could get obviously a lot closer to or and and maybe even reach the thousand horsepower mark. But let's jump now to combination number two. Okay, guys, let's take a look at combination number two on our 900 horsepower big block buildups. This one started out as an NA combination to which we would add boost to from a 671 supercharger. So let's take a look at our specs on this thing. It was a Gen 5 block. Once again, we had installed components from CP and Carrillo. This was a 496 inch stroker. We had a scat forged crank. And as I said, the CP Carrillo uh, bullet series pistons and rods to to up the displacement from our 454 up to 496 inches. We put a slightly milder camshaft, obviously, than the NA version that we did previously. It was a Comp BR300 solid roller cam, but kind of a mild solid roller. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. We used Crane 1.73 aluminum roller rockers. We had Pro Max CNC heads on the spec sheet here. It says 355s. They were actually 340s. We had a Mylodon uh, oil pan and windage tray. We started off with an Edelbrock Super Victor and a Holly 1050 Dominator to run this thing naturally aspirated, an MSD billet distributor, our two and a quarter inch long tube headers that we always run. And then obviously we played with both jetting and timing to try to optimize the NA power output. And here's what happened when we ran Whoa. our combination. And by the way, this combination was right near 10 to one with our uh, CP pistons. So this thing produced 676 horsepower NA and 590 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we removed the single-plane intake manifold and installed. This was a, a 671 supercharger kit from the guys at Speedmaster. But this early one, I, they may offer their own blower now, but this was way before that. This was actually a, a genuine 671 from the guys at the blower shop and a really nice one. So it made good power. We'd use it on a number of different combinations. And I, and I really like this particular 671. It worked out very well. So here's what happened when we put the 671 on it. Let's take a look. We had two carburetors on this thing. We ran two HP, Holly HP 950 blower carbs. We still had our dyno headers on and our MSD distributor. We had a, we had it set up with a 55 tooth blower pulley and a 50 inch crank pulley, meaning we weren't spinning the blower very fast. When you have a big blower pulley and a small crank pulley, that's not spinning it very fast. When you swap them around, now you're spinning the blower much faster and you'll make more boost and make more power. This thing was running a peak of only 3.4 pounds of boost, so not very much. But we were all the way up to 809 horsepower, where a peak torque checked in at 685 foot-pounds. So if we were only running 3.4 pounds with a blower and we're only making 900 horsepower, the best thing to do, obviously, is to turn the boost up, which is exactly what we did. And here's what happened when we cranked the boost all the way up to 6.8 pounds. Again, not very much boost, but we saw really good gains, and that fits this thing nicely in the 900 horsepower combinations because our peak power checked in at 928 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 790 foot-pounds. Again, with a peak boost reading of 6.8 PSI. And I can tell you what kind of pulley arrangement we had. Uh, I think we just swapped them. Yeah, we did. We swapped the, the blower and the because they're interchangeable. So we swapped swap the the blower and the crank pulleys around now we had a 50 tooth blower and a 55 tooth crank and again th that combination spinning the blower fairly fast um only could produce a peak of 6.8 psi but the nice thing is lots of power you know near 630 horsepower which or, or 900 near 930 horsepower so we're really spinning the 671 pretty well on this combination because we had a fairly healthy um na combination so now let's take a look at our final 900 horsepower big block so for our final 900 horsepower big block combination turbos have entered the chat that's right we started off with a gen 6 454 from the wrecking yard, basically a stock bottom end. We add, took it apart, added ring gap to it, and then installed a decent set of heads, cam, and intake, and then installed fairly low buck turbos on these things. So this is a really good reproducible combination that you can make lots of power from. So let's take a look. Gen 6 454, the rings were gapped at 30,000, plus or minus. Um, we had a set of dart oval port heads. They were... Um, 
Ovalport 275s from Dart, and they were ported by Andy Mitchell. Again, you, you probably could do this same thing at this power level with the stock heads that come on the motor. We had an Edelbrock Victor Jr. 454R um, designed to work with EFI. We had a Holly HP management system. We had a 1,000 CFM four-hole throttle body. We had 80-pound injectors because this was port injected. We had a custom comp cam. It was a hydraulic roller. 561 lift, 233, 239 degree duration split, and 118 degree lobe separation angle. We had some inexpensive comp like uh, cast aluminum roller rockers. We ran our dyno headers as usual. And with an MSD distributor, this combination produced a whopping 509 horsepower and 497 foot pounds of torque. So we did obviously what you need to do <laughs> to make more power than this. We just added boost. So here is the gain in power with just 10 pounds of boost. We are up over 800 fairly easily, 824 horsepower and 832 foot-pounds of torque. We can take a look at our turbo combination. We added a pair of the inexpensive GT45 style, you know, the aftermarket offshore kind of turbos are very easy. I think we bought these for a couple hundred dollars each. We had a dual core CX racing intercooler, ones that I've used on all the big bang stuff. We had two turbo smart wastegates and we had an electronic boost controller on this thing. We were running, uh, let's see, a total of about 26 or 27 degrees. This thing was also run on E85. So obviously to get to 900, all that we had to do was turn the boost up. That was 10 pounds. Here's 12 pounds, getting near 900, 884, and then another turn of the controller here. And at 15 pounds, we were easily over 800. I mean, easily over 900, 970 horsepower, and peak torque checked in at 984 foot-pounds. So these turbos, these twin GT45s, will support about 700 to 750 apiece. So they'll easily take you into the middle four digit power level if that's where you want to go. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway from our 900 horsepower big block Chevy combinations? Well, I think we learned this. It's still possible to make even 900 horsepower with big block Chevys and we did it naturally aspirated with a 671 blower and with a junkyard 454 and a pair of inexpensive turbos. So 900 horsepower, definitely possible. You can also do it with nitrous and or a centrifugal blower. So there's lots of different ways. And so that begs the question, if we've already made 900 horsepower with a variety of different combinations, can we make a thousand? The answer to that question obviously is yes. That video is coming up. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More and more testing coming up.